Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith with the Laboratory for Paleoclimatology at the University of Ottawa. This uh, is part two of uh, a video. I'm talking about uh, very rapid global climate changes and how that impacts things. When we build new projects, we do environmental assessments that don't account for climate change. So I'm talking about the rapid changes that are happening in 2016 and how we need to consider these changes in everything we do. I'm just gonna get the light. So Earth Null School is a, an excellent site. Just Google it. it. You can get information on weather and ocean conditions. So right now we're looking at jet streams and the waviness in them. Now, I'm going to talk about the sea ice in the Arctic and also the Antarctic and how basically the reformation of the sea ice in here in mid uh, November is just it's reaching it's doing unprecedented things. It's just not growing like it should be growing. Um, and I will show the best way to look at data on the Arctic is just Google Arctic sea ice uh, graphs. Um, and you can read Nevin's blog, you can look at the forum where lots of experts are talking about sea ice and satellite imagery. And this data, you can get images that are, that are data from the previous day. So I'll be, a lot of the images on the Arctic you'll see. So what is going on with the greenhouse gases? So I'm showing here atmospheric methane and CO2 concentrations in the atmosphere. It's the values in the atmosphere that the climate system cares about. So here we have 800,000 years of data going up from, eight, from the past to the present. This data is if you drill an ice core in Antarctica down, say, three kilometers through the ice sheet at the, at the center, the highest point of the ice sheet, and you go down to the bedrock, you can extract this core of ice, and then you can analyze the ice. Looking at bubbles in the ice gives you the greenhouse gas concentrations of the atmosphere back at that particular time. Deep, be deeper time as you go further down. How do you know what the time was for different layers? You analyze the oxygen isotopes in the water that is frozen in the ice, and these oxygen isotopes tell you the temperature at when that ice, when that water was deposited on Antarctica. So when it snowed in Antarctica, it tells you, you, so it gives you an idea of the source temperature of where that water came from, which then you can extract to a temperature. So here's, so then you can, so, so here's what we basically have for methane. Okay, uh, so levels of methane well above 1800. We're seeing numbers 2,500, 3,000 up in the Arctic. The Arctic is a big source of methane, as are wetlands and things like that. But methane is short-lived in the atmosphere, but it has a very large global warming potential compared to CO2. So this is the CO2 um, over, over this time period. Here we are today, we're well over 400 parts per million. And what you can see here is you can see the previous warm period and then a cooling. So the warm period might last 10, 20,000 years and then a cooling over 100,000 years. You know, a warm period, cool period, and so on. You get these cycles and these are due to the orbital uh, parameters of the Earth around the Sun. The, 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 uh, Basically, the ellipticity or the ovalness of the orbit of the Earth around the Sun changes on a 100,000-year and a 400,000-year time scale. The, Earth is, the tilt of the Earth is changing on a 40,000-year time scale, uh, so the tilt relative to the plane of rotation between the Earth and the Sun, that plane. The, also, the, the Earth is spinning about an axis, and that axis is processing. It's not always pointing at the North Star. It processes um, on a uh, time scale of, of 20, 20 odd thousand years. So, so we have these cycles occurring, these three cycles. Uh, when you add all these cycles together, it gives you this type of behavior. 
So, but what's happening now in terms of CO2 rise, in terms of methane rise, in terms of temperature rise, in terms of changes in ocean um, conditions, acidity, etc. These things are all happening at least 20, maybe 40 times faster than any change in the paleo records. So let's have a look at the main greenhouse gases. We've got CO2 here, you know, an increasing rise. We've got methane with this leveling off here and a, a strong rise again from 2007 on, and we've got nitrous oxide. So the global warming potential of CO2 is defined as one with methane on a 20 year time scale. Methane is 86 times more powerful um, than CO2 on a mass basis. Over a 100 year time scale, which everybody uses, the global warming potential is 34 times for methane. Most people say that incorrectly as being 20 or 22 or 24 or 25 times. That's wrong. It's 34 times. That's according to AR5, the IPCC latest report, and also just in the literature. If you go to a few year time scale, methane is 150 to 200 times more powerful than CO2. So methane coming up in the Arctic will cause a lot of localized heating in the Arctic. Nitrous oxide is also rising rapidly with a global warming potential of 300 compared to CO2. Now, what these are, are basically the slopes of these above curves. They're the rates of change. So look at the CO2 trending up. The frightening thing is this year, we're expecting the CO2 rise to be between four and five parts per million. 4.3, 4.4, you know, who knows where it's going to fall exactly. It's off of this chart. And this is extremely concerning because anthropogenic CO2 emissions are supposed to have leveled the last three or four years or so. This is the methane. So you can see that the rise almost went flat here. It stalled out. And then it's been it had a very sharp uprise since here. How much is due to fracking? How much is due to methane coming out of the much warmer Arctic, for example? These things all need to be studied in great detail. It's, they're all contributing to more methane. And nitrous oxide is also showing a rise, as you can see. So global emissions, I said, have stalled for three or four years. The projection for 2016 from humans, 36.4 gigatons of CO2. That's a very, almost the same as in 2015, very small change. And also in the previous year, 2014 and 2013, not much change. However, why is the CO2 level in the atmosphere hitting record high levels? 3.05 ppm last year and four, between four and five, you know, 4.4, whatever between four and five in 2016, unprecedented rise. I think the rise in the beginning of November to the previous year was is about 4.28, but it's still, we, we have to take it over the whole year. Unprecedented rise, what does this mean? This could be very bad news since it seems to indicate that global sinks are likely failing or these numbers are not correct. What do I mean by global sinks failing? Think of a bathtub, full of water, you've got the tap running, and you pull the plug. So the water level in the bathtub will stay the same if what's coming out of the tap equals what's going down the plug. If you open the tap up wider, you're producing more. The source is going up, and the level of the water will rise in the bathtub. If you start clogging the sink, then the level will continue to rise. So the Earth system is just like that. The CO2 in the atmosphere is like that water in the bathtub. The sinks are things like the forests around the world, any, any vegetation. The oceans are, are a strong sink. About half the CO2 we put in the atmosphere goes in the oceans. The oceans are warming. Warm water can't absorb, it can't dissolve or hold as much CO2. So warming ocean, stratified oceans, and this ocean sink is decreasing. Every time there's a fire, you know, these massive forest fires in the boreal forests, 
from, from the, them drying out. When we dry out peat and permafrost and stuff and it starts to burn, we're taking all that carbon that was stored in those materials and we're putting it into the atmosphere, ocean system. So if these sinks are failing and continue to fail at ever increasing rates, then this problem will be taken out of humanity's hands in terms of we can zero our fossil fuel emissions and everything and the levels will still rise up and we'll still have abrupt climate change. This is why I talk about the three-legged bar stool of solutions, which I advocate very strongly. Uh, I'll get to that. Uh, I've talked about that in many other videos. So let's move on. So this, is a very, this could be very bad news for us. This is incredibly unbelievable rise in temperature this year. Here's 2016 on the graph. You don't need to know, you don't need to be a scientist, you don't need to be a technical person to see, you know, look, we're going up to huge levels. This is the baseline, the average zero, eight, relative to 1880. Say the average, if you take the average over this period here, it's, that's the zero point. So that's called the late 19th century, if you like. So this is the one degree above. This is about 1.2 degrees or so above. Now, if you take this temperature um, relative to the um, relative to 1750, which was considered the pre-industrial, then you need to add another 0.3 on here. So this is about 1.5 above the pre-industrial, uh, which is already, which is, we're hitting these limits that are discussed in Paris, the two degrees, the 1.5 degrees already. This is the average from January through June. If you want to see how this temperature change is distributed over the Earth, this is the plot for February 2016. The overall temperature anomaly versus a 51, 1951 to 80 average is 1.35 Celsius. Look at the Arctic temperatures between 4 and 11 degrees, 4 and 12 degrees Celsius warmer than normal. Um, there's a cold pool south of Greenland, which is very concerning because it's melt from Greenland and, it, and the Gulf Stream is being blocked and water's piling up on the East Coast, raising sea level there. This is, a, this is an indication of a shift in the whole system if it continues. So the February 2016 average is higher than the 1951 to 80 average by this 1.35 Celsius. Now, 1951 to 1980 average relative to 1880 to 1910 is about 0.3 degrees Celsius. The 1880 to 1910 average is higher than 1750. This is incorrect. This is actually 0 0.3 degrees Celsius according to Michael Mann. So the conclusion, if you add all these things together, you get actually 1.95 degrees Celsius if you use Michael Mann's number. So this is so for February of 2016, we were basically almost at that two degrees Celsius above pre-industrial for the entire month. So we're rapidly approaching, you know, these not when we have this over the whole year, we'll have reached the two degrees above pre-industrial, which is considered the upper bound of the safe level. And in Paris, the negotiations to get it down to even 1.5 is the aspiration. But all the intended nationally determined contributions from the 197 countries in Paris, those numbers, if you add all of those contributions, they only keep us to, uh, I, it was originally 2.8, and I've seen 3.5 degrees Celsius rise by 2100. So they're not, clearly not acceptable. So it's actually a catastrophe to the planet if the Paris Agreement is not strengthened. And yet we have, a, we have Donald Trump in the US government who's threatening to pull out of the Paris Agreement. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully he comes to his senses and gets an understanding of, what, what, of the risks that we face from climate change because it's a huge threat to all of humanity. How can humanity let one person take us down? Eventually, you know, I'm sure he'll come. Well, I'm not sure of anything. We'll, we'll see what happens. Anyway, um, I'm keeping these videos into 15 minute segments. So uh, I will be continuing. Uh, there'll be a part three to this video. Thank you for listening.